Welcome back guys to our first coverage of the new Ryzen 7000 series launch and today I am going to be talking about the 1% and 0.1% lows on the 7950X where I had to delay my review unfortunately because I was just having some really bizarre problems with this CPU and in terms of just getting those numbers to run right. And what I was initially getting, I'll pull up some examples on the screen, was I was getting 1% and 0.1% low numbers that just did not make any sense. And this was really bizarre because the average FPS was still extremely high. It was actually chart topping in most of the games I was testing. And this is very unusual because if you get really low 0.1% numbers and low 1% numbers, then you usually get lower average FPS because of that. But I actually even, for instance, on some of the titles like Tomb Raider, I matched that up with what AMD got with their results, and I got exactly the same FPS in that benchmark. So I was left scratching my head as to what was going on here, and was it more of a micro stuttering issue? And it seems that it actually was, because a lot of the games, they have their own minimum FPS counter, and they were not picking up this stuttering. It was only really with Afterburner and the River Tuner overlay when I started uh, benchmarking. And I actually asked AMD directly. They got back to me. They said, nope, there's no problems. We haven't heard of anyone telling us of problems with 0.1% and 1% low stuttering. And so I decided to dig a lot deeper and I've sort of partially found the solution in today's video. And it had to do mainly with a software update from Microsoft. That's all I can nail it down to. And so today's video, I'm gonna go over with you guys everything to do with gaming and this CPU. And not just this CPU, if you've got other CPUs, maybe you'll take something out of this video that could help you get a smoother experience, especially when it comes to measuring those 0.1% and 1% numbers. So the first problem we had here was this update. It's called Update KB5017383. Do not download this, whatever you do. If you're on a new Ryzen system, do not download this update because this was the problem for my CPU in that once I did not download this update and I installed Windows 11, a fresh install again, I then started running the benchmarks and the 1% and 0.1% lows were a lot better than what I was initially getting before installing that update. However, there were some titles where these numbers were still lower than at least the competing CPUs that we're doing in the upcoming review. Because I want, when I do this review, I wanna do a full review of it. I wanna understand the product as much as I can before I give out a recommendation to people, just so I'm covering all bases for all people who want to invest in this architecture. And to be honest with the motherboard costs and how much those things are costing and getting new DDR5 memory, it is, I feel, a big investment for most people out there. So I definitely want to get it right in terms of my recommendations. So the 1% and 0.1% low numbers, even though I fixed them by not installing this update, they were still in some titles not that great. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that this architecture, there's still a little bit of sort of caution in the wind, especially if you're a gamer. But I mean, if you're into CPU productivity, for example, and the application that you wanna use, uses all those cores and all those threads, then this architecture is going to be amazing for that. And the productivity benchmarks will show that. But even then, there's still some headwinds to get through there too. So do stay tuned for the review in that regard. But let's get back to the hardware and software configuration because if you wanna figure out stuttering, there is so much towards these CPUs nowadays that you can come into so many different problems. So for our test setup here, we had an RTX 3080. And initially I was like, okay, we're going through the hardware. Because if you've got stuttering problems, usually it's gonna be two things. It's usually not gonna be both of them at the same time. If you do that, then congratulations, you've managed to do something really wrong with your system, but usually it boils down to two things, and that is hardware or software related. So for me personally, since this was a new launch, I didn't think it would be the software. I immediately went to the hardware to diagnose my problems, 
And that's when I came into, first of all, just changing out the GPU. Maybe the GPU didn't, for some reason, play nice with this motherboard, this BIOS, this setup. I tried a 1080 Ti, it was still giving out poor 1% and 0.1% low numbers. I then said, okay, ruled out the graphics card. Then for the motherboard, ASRock actually sent over two motherboards, so we got to use a Taichi and also the Pro RS, and they were both giving out the same problem. So after that, I then tried the different memory, and so we went into the BIOS, and we tried the, uh, I got some Expo memory, it has 6,000 megahertz XMP profiles, I'm too used to saying XMP, but they've got two profiles in there, 6,000 megahertz, and also 5600 megahertz. Tried both those profiles, the stuttering was still there. I also tried some Corsair uh, Vengeance CL36 6000 megahertz memory and that didn't work, that didn't fix the problem. So then we went to the cooling solution and here's where uh, we've got a 420 mil H170i Corsair cooler. This thing is like the duck's nuts of cooling for CPUs. And you can just see on the actual cooler itself, it's telling us the liquid coolant temperature, which is 31 degrees. And this thing is not the problem. It's not causing any issues. And in fact, we're gonna make another separate video on the 7950X in particular to do with undervolting because we dropped our temperatures from 94 degrees down to 55 degrees and we lost 5% performance. We basically halved the power consumption so that's a pretty much a rant in itself because I don't know what AMD were thinking when they released these CPUs with such aggressive power draw and such aggressive clocks. Like this is ridiculous in terms of the aggressiveness this CPU has been released at. It's actually shocking. I'm surprised they went down this route when they actually at the core, all pun intended, have a fantastic product. So anyway, criticisms aside, let's get back to the hardware. It wasn't the cooler, that was not the problem because I also tested lower temperatures whilst gaming and we're still getting the same results. Then we move over to the power supply. Tried a different power supply, wasn't the problem. We even went as far as to undervolt both the CPU and both the GPU just to make sure that perhaps there was, the CPU was causing some weird transient draw and it was just going crazy and perhaps both my power supplies were bad and that wasn't the problem. So we had ruled out at this stage hardware. We even tried a different BIOS AMD. I told AMD, they said, look, here's our box for creators. You can try the chipset drivers here, the chipset um, different solutions like the, the new BIOS that they gave out for this motherboard. That wasn't the problem. So then I knew at that stage, okay, the last thing to do is try software. And you gotta remember, all this stuff takes a lot of time. I can't just whip out time. I can't go into a, a different dimension that time doesn't exist and do all this testing. I'm doing it in the real world here. And, I, and another thing was too, I got my CPU sent quite late. I only got this three days before the NDA lifted. So do apologize again for being late, but I'm doing the best I can. But then we move over to software and there's a Windows update that I thought, okay, this update, my initial thinking before I even got into the testing was, all right, this update is going to be beneficial for Ryzen because usually the Windows updates in the past have fixed scheduler issues, they've fixed problems. And I was talking to uh, Greg Salazar, he was having big problems with his 7950X setup. And so he told me, I think it might've been the 7900X, but he said he was having issues where he uh, was crashing randomly. He was having different issues on his setup. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll just get this Windows update. It's gonna save me time. But that ended up causing the problems for the 1% and 0.1% lows. But interestingly, now that I've tested this stuff out before and after this update, I was actually getting better average FPS, slightly better average FPS on the stuttery Windows update. So that's weird. Maybe that was an update that helps the Ryzen CPUs, the newer ones, the 7000 series, just in a way that is actually detrimental to them. So anyhow, bottom line is we went through this stuff and we fixed it in the end by changing or backdating the windows to uh, 21H2 
instead of 22H2. So if you're on these new CPUs, do not install that Windows update, the 22H2 update. It's going to cause stuttering issues to the likes that is going to be really annoying. It's not going to be super noticeable, but for someone like I'm an avid gamer as well. I don't just love tech and testing it all out. I love gaming as well. So when I test this out, I want to make sure that you can get that smoothest experience possible. And if you can't, then I'm not gonna recommend the product. It's that simple. So what we had here was a product that did kind of get there in the end, but I'm still cautioning in the wind if you want this for at least predominantly gaming, the 7950X. It's more a productivity CPU. I'm kind of getting some Threadripper vibes here in that it's more designed for just straight core work, hardcore, get the cores, get the productivity, get the performance, as opposed to getting something that's just purely for gaming. So I think at the moment, you've got the 5800X3D, the Ryzen 7, that would be a better purchase for gamers, especially since AM4, the motherboard socket, the DDR4, it's a lot cheaper. And also Intel have the 12600K, they've got, again, cheaper motherboards, DDR4, versus AM5, and they've also got their Raptor Lake coming out very soon, and it's rumored that AMD's also got their 7800X3D and B650 motherboard. So if you're a gamer at this stage, it just seems like a much more safer choice to wait. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video even though it's a bit late. I do have another video coming in relation to the 7950X before I do the review because I just wanna get this one right in terms of my recommendations. And in the meantime, if you're buying this for gaming, for me, it's just, just wait, just hold out. There's no reason to go buy this thing immediately for gaming. In fact, you could be coming into a worse experience than what you've already got. Also in terms of this stuff selling out, it doesn't look like it's selling out here in Japan all too quickly. The motherboard and the CPU costs are really expensive. And I think also given the macroeconomic conditions, the global economy, it's looking by the day that it's much more of a buyer's market. So the longer time goes on in this environment, the more you're gonna be able to pick and choose what's best for you. And so do not be in a rush to go buy this stuff. I know the hype train is out there. People are trying to hype this product up don't listen to it. Nothing here today made me scream, oh my God, Brian, drop the burrito, go head to the local hardware store, drop $500 on a motherboard, $300 on the 6,000 megahertz memory kit, $700 on a CPU, and then also $200 on a really expensive water cooler. So all up, the costs on getting onto AM5 seem like they are really expensive. And so with that, you would want this CPU, especially the 7950X, to perform in all fields the absolute best. But I feel like for now, for gaming, there's a bit of a, bit of a caution there, a bit of a exclamation mark. Also with the RTX 4090 coming out and also Raptor Lake around the corner, there'll be much more higher end comparisons to really draw out these differences between these higher end CPUs. So the picture will be able to get painted a lot clearer and as we said before, I feel like in the next two months, there's not gonna be a rush of people suddenly going out and buying $500 motherboard and a $700 CPU, given what's going on in the world right now. Anyhow, look forward to giving you guys the next video, which is about power consumption and how AMD, I feel, absolutely ruined the 7950X out of the box with the settings they decided to go with. Though more on that in the next video, Sorry, there's no question of the day today. I've just, I wanna get this stuff all done. So the sooner we get it done, the better. Though if you have any questions or comments about this stuff, let me know in the comment section below. I'll try and look into it if it gets enough upvotes and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye.